Hey guys, Clay here with Havoc Off-Road. This is our Aftershock rear bumper with spare tire carrier, high lift jack mount, fog light or backup light cutouts, and provisions to retain your factory hitch. I'm gonna show you how to install this on your JK. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're gonna need to do is install our lights. You cannot install or remove the lights when the bump, once the bumper's on the Jeep. You can adjust them, but you cannot remove them. And that's kind of cool because people can't steal your lights. Now there's a backing plate behind our logo. It gives the, th the logo a 3D look. You can remove this backing plate and paint it to either match an accent color of your Jeep or the body color of the Jeep. And if you're going to do that, you need to do that now. So now I want to explain what some of this cross member hardware is. You'll see we've got a bolt plate that's just going to slip into the bumper like so. These four long bolts are going to go through four holes in the middle of your cross member and then they're going to attach to that bolt plate. Now you'll also notice that there's just a flat spacer plate. If you guys are not running a factory hitch and you put your bumper on and realize, you know what, I'd like to space it out a little bit, you can do that. This takes up the distance of the steel of the factory hitch and that will just go in between there and will space your bumper off the cross member. So now this is our factory hitch. Some, not all, factory hitches have nuts that are tack welded to the outside. If yours does have that, you're going to have to cut those off. It takes about 10 minutes. Most aftermarket hitches do not have those nuts welded on there. And if you do not have a hitch and you're going to order our bumper and you want to order an aftermarket hitch, it's definitely easier to get one without those nuts welded on there. All the factory hitch does is sandwich in between the cross member. You can see how those holes are going to line up with the four holes in the frame, and then our bumper slides in over the top of that. We're not going to put a hitch on this install because we're going to swap this bumper out a few times, but I wanted to explain that to you. Now your kit's going to come with two of these L-shaped bolt plates. The longer side is going to go to the outside of the frame. There's already holes cut in the factory frame, and we reuse those holes. I've just got a little bit of black tape that I'm going to put on the bolt plate. This just helps keep it in place. And whenever we do install the rear bumper, you're going to want to try to put the bolt in on the back of this plate or closest to the end first so it doesn't push the bolt plate around. It just makes it easier and then you can get the, further, the bolt that's further away in next. Now you're going to need to repeat this process on the driver's side. So now it's definitely easier with a friend. We're just going to lift the bumper up and hold it into place. And then we're going to get this hardware through the bumper, through the frame, and into that bolt plate. And once you get that bolt towards the back installed, I'm going to go over and help my buddy holding up the other side of the bumper install that same bolt on the other side. So now we'll put this front bolt in. And you've got quite a bit of adjustment up and down, but we're just going to leave everything loose right now, and then we're going to put our cross member bolts in. So now we're going to feed our long bolts up into the cross member. You can see I've got one in. It just goes in between the shield on the top of the muffler. Just get it into place. You've got four of those. Just make sure we go ahead and install all of them. And you can see I've got a big flat washer and then a lock washer. Now once those are in position, that bolt plate that I was telling you about earlier is just going to go in to this recess and this is where your factory hitch would sandwich in there if we had that just to kind of give you an idea how that goes together. Once you get some of this hardware installed, it lets you kind of move the bolt plate around. So you can check everything, make sure you got it all in. Now we're just going to tighten that up. But we're not going to final tighten everything. We're going to leave it a little bit loose too so that we can adjust it up and down.
So now I'm just gonna push up on the bumper and I got my buddy out there looking to make sure that the bumper's level. And he said that we need to come up on the driver's side. So I'm gonna tighten down this bolt on the passenger side a little bit to hold it into place. And then we can push up on the driver's side. And we'll tighten up this one. So now we'll tighten up these two center bolts. So now we've got our bumper where we want it. I'm going to come back and tighten up these bolts on the side. The cross member really determines how the bumper sits from front to back. Not really a whole lot of adjustment there. But you can adjust it up and down. So I've checked the gaps. You look pretty good everywhere. Um, that's what that spacer plate that we include is for. If you think the bumper is a little too close for your comfort to the Jeep, you can always space it out a little bit. So the next step is to install our tailgate plate. You've got button head hardware, flat washer and lock washer. You'll notice that there's a small stud for the rubber bumper. That's just going to fit into one of the OE holes. down. So now let's explain the rest of the hardware for the spare tire carrier. You've got a large roller bearing and a smaller roller bearing. We've got a seal, a cotter pin, and a castle nut. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some rubber gloves. We're going to grease these bearings up. We did not put a Zerk fitting on the carrier. Just didn't think it was needed. I've got hub bearings that I've got 100,000 miles on, and they don't have a Zerk fitting. So we're going to put some high temp grease on these and go ahead and stall everything. This is a seal that is going to go on the bottom side of this carrier and this is going to prevent any grease from in a hot environment seeping out the bottom of the carrier and it's going to prevent water on a crossing from going up inside there and creating premature wear issues. So there's really no clean way to do this. I've just got some grease in the palm of my hand. I'm just going to press that into the bearing. We're going to do this to both of the roller bearings. Try to spin it around and press it down into all the nooks and crannies. Now they make a little tool for this. But you can put the bearing in a cone and then use a grease gun and fill it up. They work great. Just kind of showing you guys how you would do it if you didn't have that. So like I said, there's really no clean way to do it. Now we're going to do the top bearing.
So before we take our gloves off, I'm gonna put some grease inside the carrier where the seal and the race is gonna go. I'm gonna put the race in first. We'll put our bearing in. Now we can put our seal. It's just a normal wheel bearing seal, guys. You're just going to try to get it even everywhere and make sure you're tapping it in. So now you can see the seal's pretty much flat everywhere. I'm just gonna wipe off any excess grease we've got. So now we'll slide this over our spindle. And we can grab our top bearing in the race. put our castle nut on. And what I'm doing is lifting up on the carrier and I'm tightening that by hand just to get it snug. Um, once you get it snug, we're gonna go about maybe a quarter turn past that or wherever the next place we can get our cotter pin through the spindle. So I'm just looking for that hole for the cotter pin. There it is. Now, if it tends to get a little loose over time, you can always pull this cap back off of here. So now you can bend this over the top, around the sides, kind of wherever. This is just to make sure that the spindle nut doesn't back out on its own. Now, this is your machined aluminum cap and your set screw. We're going to be taking this bumper on and off a few times. What you would do if you're going to put this on permanently is just put a little bit of RTV around here. Whenever you set this cap on with the Havoc in this location, just install this set screw. And really at that point, you have a closed system. Your RTV would dry in there and it would prevent water from coming in from the top. We've got a seal on the bottom. There's no Zerk fitting to break off on the trailer, try to get to. And like I said, closed hub systems run that same axle grease for 100,000 miles and don't have any issues on a vehicle, so I think you'll be fine. So now it's time to install the Heim joint. You've got a misalignment spacer, so make sure you put both of those in. I've got it adjusted about here. You've got a long bolt washer. I'm just gonna go ahead and slip that through those tabs. Get your bolt through. There's gonna be a washer and a lock washer for the bottom and a nut. So now I'm gonna tighten the hardware on the carrier side. It's just a lot easier before we attach it to the tailgate. And now you gotta have the door open. We're gonna attach the Heim. So now before we tighten this hardware, we are gonna test this. This is where if you shut this and it's too tight, you have to pull this back out and you would loosen up the heim joint. If it's too loose, you would thread the heim joint in. What we're looking for is when you shut this to touch the rubber bump stop right about there so that when everything's shut, this part of the carrier doesn't wanna rattle, the heim doesn't rattle, and there's some preload from the tailgate on the carrier. So now we can go ahead and tighten the hardware on the tailgate. 
Shut it one more time. Everything looks good. We can move on. So now it's time to install the tire carrier standoff plate. These four bolts are going to bolt to the tire carrier. I've gone ahead and installed all of the hardware so that we can adjust this in here. It's just loosely installed, just enough to hold it together. So I'm going to go ahead and install this on the carrier. So now you can see all of this adjustment um, up and down on this carrier. The reason is it gives you five positions on the bottom and the top. We're running a 37 inch tire on quite a deep offset. So I'm going to start on the second position down. I'm just going to put the hardware through, make sure you got a washer and a lock washer on the back. Just install the rest of it too. Yep, two more on the other side. So now this would be a good time to measure your tire and make sure you're up high enough. You can also go ahead and while it's loosely installed on there, put your tire up there. This is where you're going to make adjustments. Um, you have all that adjustment up and down depending on if you're running stock tires and then you've got this adjustment out. Of course, the deeper offset you're running, you're going to want to adjust this accordingly. If you're running a factory tire where you're all the way back, you can adjust this out. If you've got a deep dish wheel, you can adjust this in. And then you can see what I'm doing here is once you get this adjusted, I would try to go ahead and triangulate these bolts as much as you can. That way you've got some tension on the sides here and then the tension on the, towards the top and the back. The kit is also going to come with the lug nuts, so you don't even need to worry about that. You can also see we've got a hole cut in this plate. If you want to run some kind of a third brake light off of your tire, there's about a million different options you can run there. And we've got provisions through all of the plates so that you can run all the wires and tuck everything up nicely. So last but not least, we need to install our high lift jack mount. Now you can see we've got these slots ovaled this way. This is where the jack is actually going to mount. They're ovaled for adjustment and the slots on the carrier are ovaled. So what we're going to do is just feed our hardware through. So you've also got these wing nuts with this rubber isolator bushing and washers. This is actually to mount your jack to the bracket. So I've left these loose if I need to move this up and down a little bit. You can see there's a cut out here in the carrier. The nose of the jack or the foot of the jack needs to face down. That keeps the jack closer to the carrier. Uh, we found the closer we could keep the jack to the carrier, the less everything rattled. And this is just going to fit through here. You'll go ahead, put this rubber isolator on, then your jack, and then you've got the washer and the wing nut on the, on the back of the jack. Um, the idea behind the wing nut is you don't really need tools at that point to remove your jack and use it on the trail. Um, you can replace this, of course, with a bigger bolt if you want to, but we actually found that in most applications this works great. So once you get everything adjusted, you can tighten it all down, you've got your jack in place, and you're done. Well, there you go, guys. Not a bad install at all. You get a little dirty with the grease and the bearings for the spindle, but all in all, it installs just like a standard rear bumper. If you guys have any questions at all, make sure to give us a call or visit us at HavocOffRoad.com. Thanks.